Hey there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. I'm your host Patson and today we're going to be taking a look at r slash mi the asshole where OP is one bitter single mother. Let's begin. My boyfriend found out the truth behind my cheating and he's now upset. Posted by Reddit user after newspaper. I realize it's impossible to try to describe what happened in the title. Just gonna clarify that it is nothing like it sounds and that the post is long. Okay, when I was 14, 34 now, I finally got my life back on track after a rough childhood. I lost my dad, was bullied on school and blah blah blah, and simply had some rough years. But I changed school, I met my group of friends and someone who a couple of months later became my first boyfriend, Tomas, 34 now. I was really happy, I felt like I had found my place finally. I was doing good on school, had a job, and at least two weekends a month, my group of friends and I would leave the town to go to a city on the coast or the capital city, just two or three hours away by car. I'm from Argentina, and we would go to see our favorite national rock bands. We loved it, we were big big fans. It was the coolest thing to do back then in my country. Doing pogo, pushing people to get to the front fence, screaming the lyrics, etc. It doesn't seem important, but it is. Basically, when I was 16, my friend group and I headed to the capital to go see one of our favorite bands, Calajeros, at a place called Cro-Manon. I'm not gonna explain what happened, just gonna say that the biggest tragedy of rock happened that night. Lots of victims and lots of people that ended up hurt. I ended up hurt, I still have a big scar on my thigh. Two of my closest friends passed away that night. It was a big big mess. I can never explain what I felt. I remember I started to go out every weekend, I would get drunk up my ass. I avoided talking about it at all. I would leave the room when someone even spoke about it, I kept pretending that everything was fine. That I was fine. In case you're wondering, getting alcohol in Latino America being a minor is not hard, much less in a small town. Plus, I'm from a town where for some reason, we also go out on Thursdays and in Latino America, we usually leave clubs and parties around 6am on Fridays, I would show up drunk at school. But that was common, so no one realized. Tomas was there, supporting me through everything. Working hard to get a smile out of me every day, trying to get me to open up, but not pushing me too much either, hugging me when I needed to. And well, our relationship grew stronger, despite me going into a darker hole. When we graduated, we moved to the same city to keep studying, and I decided that it was time for me to cut the bullshit. I got a part-time job and worked hard to get the best grades, got new friends, stopped partying so much. I thought I was fine, or at least I wanted to convince myself that I was, but with time, I realized that I wasn't. We were like 20, and I remember I started to drink again. I hated myself, I felt miserable, I had nightmares with that night, and I felt even worse because I thought I was being ungrateful. I survived at least, in my mind, feeling like this was pathetic. Mental health, well we didn't speak much about it then. It was a taboo to go to therapy. During this time, I started to treat Tomas bad. I was mistreating. No, I never hit him or anything like that, but I would often yell at him or call him names when he was just trying to help. I kept pushing him away. I realized he deserved better than me. Tomas was always an angel, of course he did. It did not make sense to me why he was still supporting me. When he found me passed out after so much drinking on the floor, he would take me to the bathroom, bathe me, dress me and put me in bed, cook for me, clean my apartment. It only made me felt worse, I had a great man, and I was treating him like shit. He simply deserved better than me. I tried to tell him that we needed to break up, but he refused. Tomas refused and told me he would stick next to me no matter what. But I only got worse and I felt like I was going to drag him with me, and I couldn't stand the idea of seeing him with me. So after thinking it, I made a choice. I did the only thing I knew he wouldn't forgive. Well I told him I did it. I told him I cheated on him with a guy from my work. A friend he was jealous of. He was upset, confused, angry, sad and felt betrayed, of course. It was heartbreaking to see him like that, but I knew it was necessary. He was much better without me, I was just a dead weight back then. Anyway, he left. I simply did not see him again afterwards. I didn't call him either, didn't search for him even though I wanted to. After I graduated, I got a full-time job, and I got tired of feeling miserable. My mom got me in contact with survivors. I'm going to clarify, many survivors had killed themselves or tried to. Most of us ended up with serious mental health issues as you can see, and they ended up convincing me to start therapy. I stopped drinking for good, and well, it was all really hard. Finally stop avoiding reality and facing my problems, accepting that I needed help. 
The whole process of opening up was hard, but worth it. Countless are the nights where I just stared at the phone, wondering if I should call Tomas or not. I wanted to call him, tell him I had lied, apologize for everything and thank him for everything he did for me. I have to say, Tomas did call to check up a few times, but I always decided not to pick up. I heard a lot of voicemails from him while he was drunk, asking how I could do that to him, but he would still say that he loved me and he asked me how I was. I forced myself to never answer. With time, his calls stopped, I got better and started to go back to my old self slowly. I started dating again, started to have more fun and eventually got married and had a daughter. Life did get better for me, but all that goes up, goes down, and my husband ended up cheating on me. Karma's a bitch, I know. I divorced him, and I was able to buy my own house and got primary custody of our daughter. My daughter has been the light of my eyes and, even with everything that happened lately, for her, I would never let myself fall into that depression again. I was and still am happier than ever. Anyway, I got in contact again with Tomas like five months ago. He found me on Instagram and just sent me a message and we started to chat, to catch up about life. He also had a kid, a five-year-old son, but he's not with his mother. It was a product of a one-night thing and they have a good co-parenting relationship. He has him two weeks a month. The thing is, we started to meet up again, just as friends at first, but then we started to hook up. We would go on dates, but we never talked about the cheating. But finally, I confessed that my feelings for him were back. Tomas told me he was feeling the same, but he wasn't sure about starting anything again with someone who had cheated. That's when I chose to finally open up about what happened in the past, about how I was feeling and how I didn't want to drag him with me, so that's why I chose to lie about cheating on him. Tomas was shocked. He got upset and I remember how he left. He called me later and told me I shouldn't have lied to him about something like cheating, that I should have just told him that I didn't want to be with him anymore. I explained again my side, and told him I rather him to think really bad of me, to be really sad for a while but eventually move on, than to drag him with me, to my dark hole. He just told me that he was an adult that could make his own choices, and that he just wanted to be there for me. I told him I didn't regret what I did, but I apologized for hurting him and hang up, and we haven't talked ever since. He called me yesterday, but I didn't pick up. I wasn't ready to talk with him yet. I have been processing all this information. Despite not being the best way, all these years I believed I had made him a favor with this. That even though it hurt him, it was the best for him. Also, I was not even close to being good enough to be in a relationship. I honestly don't know. I do know it wasn't the best way, but I had no strange to reject him. I knew he would have been able to convince me that he wanted to stay with me despite everything. And now, for OP's update. Unfortunately, my posts fall on the side full of red pill and cells and annoying bots that didn't even read or couldn't comprehend it, and I realized just by reading the first sentence. I don't really care, didn't even bother to read those comments to be honest, but I couldn't get much useful advice, which was what I was looking for, but I got a few and I appreciate them, honestly. Anyway, I'm going to start by clarifying that everything I wrote about Croman and tragedy I only wrote it for context. It was over 19 years ago. I only wrote it to explain the place where I was, how my mind worked and how I was feeling. I would never ever come to ask advice about something like that on Reddit, come on. Be serious for the love of God. I'm saying this for all the people that acted like psychiatrists and psychologists and even tried to make a diagnosis out of a Reddit post. Seriously, even if it was with good intentions, it is dangerous and really irresponsible to do so. I don't have PTSD, I searched for professional help after graduating university. I graduated 13 years ago. I saw psychiatrists and psychologists, and I never got diagnosed with PTSD, I had depression and anxiety. I could never explain the amount of pain I felt after the tragedy, and how it only got worse because I didn't search for help right away. It took a lot of work, but years of therapy and support from friends and family finally made me get back to my old self. Not fully like I wanted to, but on a point, I didn't even recognize myself. I'm saying that for the ones who told me I was toxic, and I guess I was on a point. But the others were never the problem, I was so self-destructive back then that I thought the best would be to push everyone again. But like I said, that was so long ago, and I'm not even close to being like that. I repeat, I wouldn't be so irresponsible to get into another relationship, get married, and have a child. When Tomas and I first started to date again, it was like the first years of our relationship. Healthy, fun, and full of love. Not like the last year of our relationship, that was definitely the worst year of my life. 
I've talked about it on therapy for years and years, and I put it behind years ago. Now is just something that marked me but that is my past. It left me lots and lots of problems, but well, it is what it is. I survived and should be thankful for it. Anyway, now to the point. Tomas and I met up on Seri, and things went well. We had a long, long talk. Like, we talked for hours about everything. He opened up about how hurt he felt, how awful the months after our breakup were, and how he felt like I was making the choice for him. I told him that I was not only doing it for him, but also for me. I couldn't be in a relationship back then. How could I? Traumatized for whatever reason I was, back then I was so self-destructive and not nice to be around. I also told him how he might have wanted to stay, but I didn't want him to. I reminded him that I tried to break up with him many times, and he simply wouldn't listen to my reasons and apologized for it. But he also explained how he loved me more than anything and couldn't leave in that situation. And how even after he thought I had cheated, he was scared about me trying to kill myself. Every time there was some news about one of the survivors of Cro-Manon that had killed themselves, he would freak out thinking it was me. I told him I loved him so much back then and now, but at least for me, it was not healthy to maintain a relationship. It was toxic, and it wouldn't have helped any of us at all. We apologized to each other, and I clarified that I want to leave all of this behind and to just be us, to finally put this in the past. He agreed. We cried but it was tears of happiness. I hadn't been so happy in a while, I guess deep down it was what I always wanted, ever since we broke up. To be okay again and to be like we used to. I guess that I never stopped loving him, and he never stopped loving me. I always wonder where he was or if he was okay, wonder what would have happened if things had been different. But now I don't have to wonder anymore, because we're together now and that's all that matters. But one step at a time. Well, while reading your original post, I was already thinking that you might actually be a toxic nightmare. The beginning sentences of your update just proves it. OP, I feel myself getting poison damage just from reading the shit show that is your personality. You can't just label people an incel that rightfully called you out for being an asshole. You were already a toxic shit show even before the tragedy. Oh wait, speaking of tragedy, you're an alcoholic party hoe that faced something difficult. Of course you're gonna make it your entire personality for the rest of your life and attack anyone who calls you out. OP. You asked the internet for a consensus and you received one. What you did before and you're still continuing to do now is an asshole move, however you justify it. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my channels for you to watch absolutely free. So please consider subscribing to me on Rumble and on YouTube. Both will be linked in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone, if you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and if you really like it, consider subscribing to Pat Sun to never miss a future upload. Stay strong!